In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn any thumb release into an actual hinge release or back tension release. And uh, I think that's important to, to know that you should be shooting a surprise shot if you wanna be the most accurate archer you can be. Because every single world champion out there, every single archer that has any credibility will tell you the same thing. A surprise shot is extremely important. And that's because, if I just grab my bow, uh, that's because the, when you actually shoot a surprise shot, you will have less manipulation on your bow. So if you muscle it and you know exactly when that bow is going off, you'll, you'll actually have more manipulation on the bow, making the bow not as accurate. Because again, a bow will hit the bullseye every single time. It's the person that makes the difference and whether it does or not. So I wanna dive right in and show you guys um, why it's important, one, to shoot with a surprise. And a lot of you are probably hunters and you're like, I don't wanna shoot a surprise. I need to know right when that bow's going off. We're gonna dive into all of that. Let's get started. Well, I'm definitely a hunter first before any targets, but I think if you're a target shooter or a hunter, your ultimate goal is to be the most accurate possible, and that's my goal too. If I'm hunting, I wanna hit a bullseye every single time, every single time I shoot, and if I'm a target archer, I also wanna hit a bullseye every single time, and having a surprise shot is important. So I know whenever I first started hearing about back tension and hinges, I was like, I'm a hunter, I can't shoot a back tension. I need to know right when that goes off. I can't be randomly over here and it goes off and I shoot the deer in the butt or something. So I wanna show you guys something I learned um, and that's just not the case, you know? As when you're shooting a back tension or a, a hinge, you are only going to be pulling or trying to activate the bow to go off when the pin is on the bullseye. For example, if my goal is to hit that that little dot right there, and I'm pulling, so when my pin drifts off like this, or floats up and down, or like this, I'm not pulling when it's over here. When it hits here, pull, 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 and then it's drifting off, and then I drift back, pull, pull, pow, and the bow will fire. So I'm never actually pulling or trying to activate it when it's not on the bullseye. So I think that's important to know because the bow will only go off when I'm pulling and trying to activate the release. And so let me grab some releases and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is an actual hinge with no safety or anything like this. So this isn't a video how to operate these or anything, but to pull these, obviously as you rotate, it'll fire. So I'm gonna pull back like this and then I'm aiming, okay? So now the pin is on the bullseye. So now I'm gonna start pulling, pulling. Now the pin's off the bullseye. So then when it drifts back, I pull, 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 it's off. Pull, 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 it's safety click. Pull, 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 it's off. Stopping, waiting, pulling when it's on the bullseye and it fires. So all world-class archers shoot a hinge or shoot a surprise shot. So. Again, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a normal thumb button into a hinge style or back tension release. So, let's do that. So, if you guys are wanting to shoot just a traditional, let me go ahead and sit down here. So, if you guys are wanting to shoot a normal hinge, the best one that I have found is definitely the Sweet Spot Pro or just the, yeah, the sweet spot three, any of these, these hinges are the best for hunting. And that the only reason I say that is because it has a safety. So if I use this one, for example, I'll come over here. So if I use this one, I can rotate this any way and it's, it will not fire. So I'll go full draw on my animal, get my anchor, pin hits the bullseye, and then I'm gonna rotate, I click the safety off. Now it operates like a normal hinge. So again, just so you guys can, I'm gonna, safety's off and now I can pull and that's how it fires. So from a hunting situation, no matter what angle I'm in, it has no chance of going off at any angle. So again, I can do this, it works really well. And then when I'm ready, pins on the animal, click the safety off, pull, 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 fire. So I like this release. I actually shot this for three years. Um, definitely one of my favorite releases. 
but I found like shooting 80 pounds, the tension was what sand and all this stuff would get in there and it wouldn't work really well. It, it, it does have some flaws in its design um, for shooting high poundage. Now this is Sarah's release. She actually still loves this and shoots this. So again, same thing, safety, hinge, all that. So I wanted more options. The problem is, is the safety back tension slash hinge releases out there are, are far and few between. There's only a few to choose from, and that's because they all have patents that keep you from um, breaking these. So you have one like this that activates off of a trigger. And the, as you, so then when you pull, you keep this pull back and then you release and then that's whenever it, it can fire. So again, okay, not great. But when you look into this world of just plain old thumb buttons, you get a ton of different options, a ton of different neck lengths, ton of different feels, a ton of different designs on the head designs. I mean, there's so many options when you look at just normal thumb releases. And I like I liked this idea. I love the idea that there's lots of different options. Um, I can try different things that fit my face better. So I went on a mission trying to figure out how to turn these into a hinge. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with any thumb release. So this is a typical thumb release that you would see. This is the Bone Collector Edition, pretty good release. Okay, so typically you put your thumb here like this and you press the thumb down and it fires just like that. That's a typical thumb release or this. Yeah. So right here, typical thumb, thumb on, put the pin on the bullseye fire. You're going to get target panic or even worse. If you use a trigger finger like this and you draw back like this, you, you draw back, put the pin on the bullseye and then you punch the trigger. That is a recipe for disasters. First time archers can get away with it, but I'm telling you guys, you will get target panic on shot anticipation. You'll lock low, you'll lock high, you'll lock off. I mean, there's all kinds of forms. I mean, it, when an animal comes in and you have to rush and punch the trigger, you're probably not gonna make a great shot. So getting away from these um, is something I would recommend. You can still shoot these with a back tension. I know a lot of people do. Um, still get surprise shots with this. But if you're new and you're not an experienced archer, using one of these is probably not a great idea. It's just too easy to make the mistake. So let's dive in to how we make a thumb button into a hinge. So the number one rule that you need to have, no matter what release you're using, whether it's a trigger style release, a thumb button release is you do not ever let me try and get this close. You do you do not ever want to actually move the finger that's touching the trigger. So if I'm using this for example, I I do not want to draw back right here and move this thumb ever because this thumb if, the, if my brain links this thumb when the pin hits the bullseye and this thumb punches the trigger, I will get target panic. I'll never be as accurate as I can be. So it's very important that you don't move the finger that's touching the trigger mechanism. So let's talk about turning this into a, a back tension or a hinge. So this release, I really, really like the design of it. Um, and it's a Stan Perfex, I think is what it's called. And uh, it's got multiple different adjustments. It's pretty cool. And it actually comes not like this. It comes like this. So most of the, the thumb buttons like this will have a thumb out like here. What I would recommend doing with every single thumb button is taking that peg and pushing it all the way up against the body like this. No matter what release you have, you want to get that sucker as close to the body as possible like this. So there you can see all three. I've taken the peg and I've rotated it as close as possible. Or 
you can just, in some releases, you could just take the peg completely off. And you're like, well, why the heck would I do that? Okay, let's talk about it. So we'll just use this pegless one that I took off. This is the actual one I killed lightning with. This is the one I've been using a lot of. It is the, I think it's a true ball uh, blade pro. It's the blade pro. So that is that. All right. This is why you want to move this as close to here as possible like this or take the peg off completely. So when you hook this up and you draw back, you want to take your thumb and push it into the body of the release like this. So now I can push, I can punch, I can do whatever, and that is not going to fire. So I personally do it just like this, and I'm pressing into the release like here. Not a lot of tension, just enough. Now, how do I get it to fire? Well, I'm going to rotate the, the release with my pinky. Pull, 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 pow. And I'm pulling the release into my stationary thumb. So it'll be a little easier to see here. So this is as simple as it is. So now my thumb is stationary. I'm not moving my thumb at all. I'm rotating the release into my stationary thumb like this and getting a surprise. So if you watch down here, you can see this, when this is fires, this obviously releases, okay? So if my thumb's here, I have to press my thumb. I have to press my thumb in order to get to fire. But if my thumb is here, now I pull with my pinky. And so if you see, that's how the release will rotate and it rotates into my thumb. So if I pull with my pinky, pressure here, pull, pull, pull with my pinky, pow, it's firing. Now, you're like, well, what the heck? Why not just pull it with my thumb? And why go through all the extra effort? Well, this is why. It will help you get a surprise release. So again, if I go back here, right here, the pins on the bullseye, pins on the bullseye, okay, fire, pow, you're getting target panic. You'll get it, you'll lock low, you'll lock high, you'll lock off, you won't even get on the target, it'll get so bad, you'll hate archery and be so frustrated and you just don't understand like, why can't I put the pin on the bullseye, it doesn't make any sense. If you're struggling with, with target panic, you need to take Joel, Joel Turner's Shot IQ course. It's 200 bucks. I paid 200 bucks and took the course. It changed my life. I'm not gonna talk about curing target panic in this video. That course will change your life. It's online, you can take it from your bedroom. So highly recommend it if you struggle with target panic. But one of the big things to get over target panic is shooting a surprise release with a hinge or a thumb button converted to a hinge. So now I go full draw. My thumb is pressed here. I, I cannot punch the trigger. Can't punch it. So now whenever I'm full draw, I'm aiming. Pen is on the bullseye. I'm pulling, and it fired. This is my hunting release. It's set pretty sensitive, but you can tell I cannot tell when the bow is gonna go off. So again, pen's on the bullseye. Pressure's on my thumb right here. I'll rotate out for you guys can see. Now I'm gonna be rotating with my pinky, pulling, 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 fire. So, surprise release. Now, can you absolutely punch this if you needed to? Sure, but you'll never need to, ever. Because I'm sorry, but if you're in a situation where, oh, the deer's running by and I have to time a shot, you're probably not, sh you probably shouldn't be shooting that running deer anyways. So, if you don't have time to set, anchor, keep pulling, keep pulling, and do that, odds are you probably shouldn't be taking the shot anyways. So again, converting these from a traditional thumb button like this, all you would do is unscrew this. I will do it for you guys. Right, right here, I will show you guys in real time how this works. So a traditional thumb release, all you have to do is unscrew this peg and rotate it all the way forward. 
Now see how this doesn't go all the way forward like this? So I won't, I can't get into this, right? Because the peg is over here. So I could take this peg and flip it and put it on the inside, which is actually what I do with these. So I take the peg, I flip it around to where the long side is towards my face. So the inside, cause I'll rotate like this. So this can cause issues if you don't trim these buttons down. But what I would do um, in this situation, as you guys can see, I could flip the peg around and put it over here or I could just take this peg completely off. And the reason why I would just do that is because you can see how this, the, the actual mechanism that fires is dead center in here. So I would be able to absolutely activate this like that. Where this guy, so you see, let me show you the difference. So if you would, were to take this off, it would look like this. So when you take this off, it's dead center right here. I can rotate my pinky into here and fire. So I don't even need a peg. Where this guy, I wouldn't be able to do that with this stand. See how small that is? I wouldn't be able to get that rotation or this. So I leave this, the peg on here. I take it all the way up as close as possible like that. Now, I don't like this extra sticking around. I don't wanna feel this on my thumb. So what I did was I took a grinder and I grinded half of it off, just like that. So it's super small. I used a smaller thumb um, peg, obviously, but yeah, I grinded it down to where it's super small. So now I, I don't feel that at full draw. So whenever I activate it, pull pulling with my pinky here, super small, doesn't catch on anything, ready to go. Same thing with this guy. Flip the peg, flip the, the actual thumb peg inside like this. It was pointed out here like that. So I flipped it inside and then grinded the end down. So that's super easy. I pull with my pinky right here. Pull, 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 fire. Pull, 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 fire. That is exactly what you're gonna wanna do to your releases is get a small surface area that you're not gonna be punching. And that's why I like this a lot. Or the bone collector one. This is an affordable thumb release that you could take this peg completely off and just use that. I know this is a really long video to get to something super simple, but guys, I'm trying to help you here because I've been where you're at. I've been in situations where it's, it's horrible. I have target panic and I'm trying to learn how to shoot a back tension, but I kept, punching myself in the face because like this is a back tension. And if you naturally, you want to pull with, with these fingers because that's your stronger fingers. So it's unnatural to only pull like with your thumb and index finger like this. And then you got to re grab it and then pull into position and then fire. And I don't, I don't like doing that with hunting. Levi Morgan is amazing at it. He'll take this a release like this hunting where it's no safety, nothing. So, and he's really effective at it. But again, this is a true hinge, no safety, nothing. So if I'm pulling and I get here and I accidentally pull with my pinky as I'm pulling it back, it'll fire and punch yourself right in the teeth. I've done that. <laughs> That's why I don't like using these in hunting situations. I am surprised I still have front teeth because I've done this quite a few times. D loops busting, knock me in the mouth. So if you're looking to shoot a back tension slash hinge style release where you're pulling, 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 firing, I would recommend shooting a True Ball Sweet Spot Pro, which is an actual hinge like this. Again, it has a safety. Will not fire until I click that safety off. And then I rotate and it fires. This is a good release. I don't like it for shooting 80 pounds. I've went through like five of them, never got one for free. I've always paid for them. And, and I do like it. I shot it for three years, but I've had a lot of issues over the years needing to replace them. Um, Sarah doesn't have any issues at all, but she shoots 65 pounds, a little bit different. When you're shooting 80 pounds, there's a lot of pressure on that release, especially when you shoot as much as I do. So 
converting this, if I had to pick a release that I love, I really like the, the design of this stand right here because it's got this like, if you could see that, it's got this like little finger here. It's spring loaded. So when you clip it onto your string, it just kind of hangs there and it's locked in, but you get the benefit of that, that single kind of like a hook there. So it's kind of cool. It's a neat design. I like that. That's also what I don't like about this is you can't hook it on your string and let it hang there because it'll fall off. Not a big fan. So I like the, the, the head of this one better. The neck is not quite long enough for me. So when I'm here, I feel like I'm kind of crunched up in my face like this. So this release is my second favorite for that reason. This release um, is really good. I like this stand a lot actually. So I shot this release really, really well and, and it fits my face quite nicely and I can get good rotation out of this. Pull, 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 firing. Um, I do like this release. The, there's very few things I don't like about it. Uh, there's just a lot of extra going on right here that, that uh, my hand can kind of touch right here. So it's, it's good. I would, I've shot that. I killed deer with this actually this year. Um, but my favorite release because of how it feels in my hand is definitely this true ball blade pro it's heavy in my hand. I like that it's spring loaded. So I don't need two hands to, to um, activate it. So again, I can shoot and click with one hand. I, I don't need to be fumbling with two hands trying to get this thing on my bow in a spot and stock situation or anything. So this is my go-to release here. And it does, if you look, have like a little indent right here, which fits perfectly for my thumb like this. I highly doubt it was designed for this, obviously, but it works out really well. So I can go full draw, place my thumb right here, and then I can start executing my shot. Keep pulling, keep pulling, fire. This release I found to be the best for me and how I feel. Now, as you guys can see, I try and buy about every release there is. So I got a ton of them. This is just some of them. This isn't even all of them, but my favorite head design, so I would love to shoot this release if it fit me better. Doesn't fit me. I would. I like this release. I like the design, the how it feels, and everything else. But you can also hear the difference on loudness. I'll be quiet. Listen. Much quieter. Um, I don't know if that'll make a difference, quite frankly, but. I don't know, when it's right by your ear and it goes off, it sounds really loud, so I'm probably making a bigger deal out of it than it is. But this stands really good. I've had this for years and it hasn't done anything other than shoot <laughs> shoot a, a arrow through my window, um, but that was on me. Also, another tip I wanted to show you guys. With this stand, this peg actually came all the way down here. So I grinded if you look, that peg came all the way down here, and that's actually how I shot it through a window, was I touched the peg that used to exist here. And then I grinded it off. So if you have a release that has an extra long peg, grind that sucker off. So then you don't, don't touch it. All right, guys, so we're gonna do a quick recap. I went over every reason why you'd wanna shoot a, a hinge style release. A lot of you guys are scared of these. Because, and rightfully so, because you're gonna punch yourself in the face. So it takes a lot of training to shoot one of these right, because you gotta pull with your thumb and your finger, then settle in, aim, and fire. A lot of you guys, the first time you do this, you'll pull with your middle finger when you're full drawing like this, and it rotates through, and it goes off and you punch yourself. So I know a lot of you are scared of this, but if you have a thumb button at the house, Try taking the peg off. Operate it like I showed you. Thumb here, rotate with the pinky. It fires the exact same way this fires. The only difference is you're not gonna punch yourself in the face as easy. So here, rotate and fire. 
rotate the pinky. That will turn this sucker into a hinge. And again, it's important to get a surprise shot. The only reason you're gonna to wanna to shoot a hinge is for a surprise. And surprise shots are always more accurate shots. And again, I went over, you only pull when the pin is on the bullseye. So if you're here and it's off, I'm not, I'm not pulling anymore, I stop. Pin comes back on, pull, pull, pull. Pin comes off, I'm not pulling anymore. Pin's back on, pull, 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 ow. And that's how you guys shoot accurately with surprise, is you control the movement in a very slow pace. Pull, pull, pull. My brain is not saying fire. My brain is simply communicating with my hand to keep pulling, not to fire. That is the difference. That is how you're able to get a surprise shot. If your brain wanted, it, you don't surprise if you say, pins on it, fire. <laughs> Target panic, you're gonna get it. So when I'm at full draw, my brain is saying pull, my fingers are pulling, and it's going back to my brain saying, hey brain, I'm pulling. And then the brain says, okay, keep pulling. And then the fingers go back. It's a closed loop. And Joel Turner talks about this. My fingers go to my brain. It says I'm pulling. My brain says keep pulling. Fingers say I'm pulling. Brain goes back to fingers. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. And then the bow will go off when it goes off. I have no control of whenever that happens. So I hope this video helped you guys. I, I cannot emphasize enough to you. If you have target panic, you need to take Joel Turner's course. He is the world's leader in curing target panic. I talk about it like it's a disease and it is a disease. I know I suffered with it massively for five years and it changed my life. So take that course. And if you're wanting to try out a hinge without actually spending a couple hundred bucks and buying like the Sweet Spot Pro or however much that sucker cost, then try converting a cheap thumb button into it. This one's not cheap, by the way, but like any of the thumb buttons that you find at Walmart, you could probably do the same thing if you want to try what a back tension feels like, so, or a hinge. So again, I hope that this video helped you guys. I've had a lot of people ask me how I converted my thumb buttons into a hinge. Well, here you go. This is the video for you.